Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about the beef between sports card radio and sports card investor. So sports card investor, uh, he recently said that some baseball player was on a different team. Uh, he was reading off a script and said that it was written incorrectly and then he didn't catch it in real time. Obviously, they also edit, so nobody in the edit caught it either. Now, I think the baseball player is kind of famous and he said it was like a Dodger player. So, I mean, again, you can kind of see the confusion if you don't follow base. I don't follow baseball. Um, I only know generic baseball players, but I would have been confused too. I would not have caught that error because I don't watch baseball. So, I think the beef comes from just uh, a little bit of, you know, he's made sports card investors made some really crazy deals like even the star jordan at the national which he bought for a hundred thousand that's way down considering that was just a, a month ago or something we saw the one of one i mean i'm never going to forget this the one of one michael jordan auto for a james harden card i live in houston i know a lot about james harden so i just kind of think you know i it's just like, wow, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> I don't think anyone would make that trade. I think the beef comes down to, do you believe he's actually good for the hobby? Is the hype good for the hobby, the positivity, the, you know, bringing more people into the hobby? It definitely is not advisable. I think in one of the videos he was saying that he has 25% of his, uh, his net worth in, alternative investments, whatever that means, uh, whatever he defines that as, and that's a lot. Um, as I've already said, you gotta fill up the traditional investments, pay off your home, pay off your mortgage, pay off your car, pay off your debt, and then you know put money into stocks, bonds, something that is easy to get out of if you need to. And what we're finding right now is there is a big liquidity problem on a lot of sports cards when you take a massive haircut and it's not anything like you. A lot of people, when they buy, they, when they buy, it's because they're in a good mood, they have a lot of money. When they sell, it's because they have to sell. And when you have to sell, you're going to take a haircut like you've never seen. And again, it's the old school versus the new school. And that's kind of where I am. You know, I'm old school magic. I have certain feelings that are not the same as new people. You know, I watch new people. I watch a YouTuber sell his reserve list cards, which is sacrilegious in my opinion, to buy flesh and blood cards when the game just came out. And then he promoted flesh and blood. He talked shit about magic and now he's selling magic live, which is like what I'm trying to do, right? Um, it's, you know, in my opinion, when you sell magic reserve list for another game, a brand new game, there's no coming back to magic. That's it. Uh, that's all I need to know about you is that you will abandon something that you loved, some, a binder that you made. Uh, and a lot of new kids, they won't care. They'll continue to watch, continue to support because they don't get it. And I think I relate more with sports card radio than I do with sports card investor, this kind of old school mentality and another good example of this is recently 100 Thieves with Nate Shot and Frosty. So 100 Thieves, they gave a quarter million dollars to uh, four kids. Their name was The Mob. And they wanted them to make content. And the way that Nate Shot worked was he slept on, and then Devin Nash and all these OG content creators. They, you know, Devin Nash tells the story. He didn't even have a bed. And he was sleep. He didn't have a couch most times. He was sleeping on the floor, trying to join this esport organization and trying to make it. And he made it, but he had to work really hard, just like Nate shot. He put in the hours and hours and hours and hours of time. And it's not something that the, these new kids, the mob, even did. I think one of them, the main guy, Frosty, streamed. What was it like? This is their full-time job. It's the same idea of the NPL, Magic the Gathering League. You tell them, hey, can you stream 40 hours a week? And all of them now have mental health issues and they can't stream at all. 
So then you have to get rid of the program. You have to get rid of the whole $100 million program because the people that you're paying all this money to, they don't give a shit about you or your product. And now they're not even, you know, part, I mean, they're milking the brand for whatever it's worth to them, but they, the product gets no benefit because they're not streaming or promoting the product. None of them were ever streaming. They all had mental issues when that became, you know, mental health became a big speaking issue. They all said, oh, mental issue, no, no stream today. So the company was the coach was paying them so, millions of dollars for this group, $10 million a year for a group of, I think 60, 70 people total. And they couldn't get their act together to actually stream. So then they canceled the entire program. That's what I'm feeling like the old school mentality where you work hard, you work for the money you make, you spend the money you make on what you want and you work hard again. It's the Nate shot. It's the Devin Nassim. It's my mentality is why I'm successful in my marketing agency. You just work. Um, you, you see with the young generation quiet quitting, even with my previous um, hire for this exact channel, no matter how many inspirational stories I tell her, no matter how motivation, okay, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you, it doesn't work. And this is, I think, what we see in Jeff. Well, I'm not saying Jeff Wilson is a not a hard worker. I just think with the fractional ownership promotion, with the slab protector, like all of this seems completely unnecessary to an old school collector like me. I don't even grade my cards for the most part because I don't feel like that's necessary. In fact, for storage purposes, it, I look at it and it's like, why would I do that? Now I can't put the card in a binder for easy storage. So, but the new kids are always grading cards and flipping and flipping, and they've only been in the hobby for two, two years, three years. I mean, how much could you really love magic when you flip on it for the new game, the new hype game? And you're, you're like, oh, no more magic. I'm gonna join, join. so in my mentality, it's dot. It's you, you ride or die. You ride with me and you die. I mean, it's not. I mean, I guess we grew up with different rap and Eminem, and we grew up with this idea, right? I mean, even in the music that we had when we were younger, that when you're friends with somebody, I remember one song. I don't know what song it was. Maybe it was Linkin Park or something. But it's like you know your friend is ride or die with you if your friend knows that you're wrong, but he'll still support your choice. He'll still support you, even though he knows. Now in today's generation, then the person be canceled. We got to report them to the police and or the cancellation culture. We got, I mean, oh my gosh, he's doing this thing. We just tweet, we just backstab our friends. You know, it's just like the flesh and blood content creator who got kicked out of flesh and blood and now doing magic. He doesn't love magic. He cannot love magic. He made two, for two effing years, he just talks shit about magic. How the blank do you love magic after that? It doesn't make any sense. And this is what I'm saying about, you know, the old school sports car radio. And he is old school. He has evidence where he's been doing this for a long time. I've been doing magic for a long time. You know, I'm one of the OG YouTube channels. I had a YouTube channel called New Law Student. You can go on YouTube and some people make commentary on me. And that's the only history of that channel. But even this channel, MTG Lion's been around for a long ass time. So when I see a new up and comer, it's good. But don't tell me that we're gonna sell our blanking reserve list cards for some flesh and blood. I mean, what am I gonna make? I mean, what can I, I mean, what can I say? Uh, what, what, what? Is there anything I can say? Is there anything I can do about this individual? No, but in my mindset, I have no respect for them because they're not ride or die. They're not ride or die. They're going to move on if, if uh, for instance, this is exactly their mentality and this is exactly the mentality of uh, Jeff. Hey, F1 is really popular. Let me get into F1. Oh, F1 tank 90%. Oh, let me get a Marvel PMGs. Or oh, Marvel PMGs tank. Oh, let me go Walt Disney cards. Oh, let me go to this. Let me go to that. Let me go. Man, like what the heck is wrong with you? Like, you know, like, um, let me talk about baseball cards, even though I don't watch baseball. Let me talk about F1, even though I don't watch F1. Let me talk about soccer. The like, I don't, you know, it, it, it's just astounding that they can talk about, they, they have such, quote, knowledge about like 18 different sports. 
And it's like nobody has that time to watch that many sports and been a active, but they're pretending to be. They're pretending, oh, Marvel PMG, oh, nice. And really it is a pump and dump. It is exact, I mean, they don't have any interest in the, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna hurt the actual collectors with interest because what, what happens is they skyrocket the price, the collectors buy a high price and then they dump it. They dump it on these collectors and then they leave. And their cards are worthless. So instead of getting a card for $10, the sports card investor people come in and now a card's $200. You want the card? No, okay, well, it's okay, it's not for you. It's the old Wizard of Coastline, it's not for you. If you don't have the money to buy it, it's not for you. So, I get where the old school, I mean, this is a big thing. This is all society, right? This is not just sports cards or magic cards or, you know, um, e-sports, right? With Nate Shot versus Frost Day, right? Two different generations. My generation, the old school generation, the dinosaurs, if you will, we think you got to work really hard. You, you collect what you like collecting regardless of price because you're not collecting to flip it. You're not going to, you're going to hold this card for a while. And then the new school generation, hey, I'm gonna sell all my reserve list cards for some flesh and blood. And then when flesh and blood kicks me out, I'm, I'm gonna do more magic cards. How you ever come back to a game where you talk so much shit about this game? You know, I talk shit about magic, but I don't say flesh and blood is better than magic. I don't say meta zoo is better than Pokemon. I mean, this, these are obvious things that are not true. So, but like when you're promoting it, like, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, this is just kind of a generational gap, I think. Um, or it's not even generation. It's a old collectors versus new collectors. And the new collectors, they get flashy stuff and TikTok, and they, they know how to sell box breaks. And, you know, while we, the dinosaurs, are kind of technologically not advanced, but at the end of the day, we have all the money. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I'm buying, like, epic, you know, I... There are a lot of flesh and blood collectors who approach me and I say, F off, man. I told you not to buy it. Now you're trying to sell it to me for pennies. There's a guy in Houston and he's got a massive collection. I mean, like, it probably like fits a U-Haul van. Like one of those like mini went, not, not like a big one, not a big one, not, but like, you know, a, a decent size, like a medium size minivan. And uh, nobody wants it, man. It's been on sale for the last two weeks on Facebook Marketplace. No interest. Anyway. I get sports car radio. I kind of side with him, but then I also understand that, you know, things are changing. The effing, you know, mob wants to not work and be paid. The MPL wants to not work and be paid. It's really easy. We got mental health problems today. What, what's Wizard, okay, Wizard Coast gives you $10 million. Everybody got mental health problems. What can Wizard Coast do? They can't call them out on it. Oh, um, can we see a doctor's note? Oh my gosh, how would you say that? How could you possibly say that to me? My gosh, you're just offending me. I'm shaking in anger, as the uh, old sta statement would go. It's like, oh, oh, no, 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 well, let's give you some more money. Eventually, somebody wins a coast. No, no, we got to pull the plug in this 100 million. Imagine a $100 million 10-year project being the plug being pulled because everyone was too lazy to do the basic streaming they signed their contract to, to actually do. They signed a contract, they put their name down, they read the contract, it said 40 hours of streaming a week, None of them were able to do it. Most of them couldn't even do four hours a week because of mental health issues. That's the new generation that I'm talking about. They flip flop all the time. Um, they want free stuff, free student loans, free mortgage, free money. They want free environmental health. They, they want to, you know, this is the problem. And I sound old as hell when I say this, but this is the problem, not just in America. In China, they have lying flat. Uh, in America, they have quiet quitting where you just do such a bad job at your current. And then I've had my last person essentially was quiet quitting. I mean, she did such a bad job. She just refused to do anything productive. And eventually you just have to let her go. And she's like, oh, but it, and that, and even when you're like, oh, I'm going to let you go. They still don't do anything because they don't, they don't want to be let go. They want to be let go. And it's just come. I mean, I'm never going to get it. You know, I'm old school. I'm you know, reserve list until you die. I'm Rudy. Rudy thinks the same way I do. Same does as Alpha. Uh, Rudy thinks the same way. Uh, Edwin thinks the same way. And Power Nine. Everybody who has money in this 
thinks the same way I do. It's like we're in this for the long haul. We ain't this up. We're not here to flip some cards, right? We're here to build a collection and build true value over time, just like a portfolio. <laughs> Guys.